But one looks at Euler's formula, in particular this Euler's formula for an exponential. And we often see it as a cosine plus a j sine. And it's, this is something that can be derived, but it often just kind of seems like, okay, well, what's the point of this interesting formula, right? And so, again, remembering that j is, in fact, the square root of minus 1, so good. And then you go, well, what happens? Well, one of the things that's useful is giving us a sense of how we might calculate things at different phases. So, you know, at 0 or at 2 pi, you're going to get 1, because you can see there's a 2 pi periodicity. You can tell that there's a minus 1. It gives you kind of a way to calculate this, which is really useful, as well as what happens on the half angles and gives you j. This is when sine pops up. But there's something more interesting that comes out on top of it. It just it now becomes a general formulation that you can use in many, many different places. For example, if you realize that now I take the sum and diff if I take the sum of this and it's negative, I get two times cosine. So I get a definition for cosine. Similarly, if I subtract them, I get a definition for sine. Now this is interesting because now I actually have a formulation of cosine and sine as the sum and differences of complex exponentials. And this gets used in all sorts of different places and all sorts of different uh, higher level mathematics. But just to take some interesting simple examples of it is it gives you ways to derive cosine squared, sine squared, maybe cosine times sine, because I can then say, well, cosine squared is this, this whole formulation squared. Sine squared is this formulation squared. This one is just the multiplication of the two. And then I could just basically expand the polynomials out. Each, you know, basically I'm going to get three terms from this two and group the terms. And what I notice, I have a two here, but then I also get these other two exponential terms. And you're like, that's cool. Okay. And so now if I group this part, that gives me a, a cosine, but of twice the angle. And you might be familiar with these, you know, twice angle kinds of formulas. With cosine, you get a one plus with sine because of the negative signs, you actually get a 1 minus. The negative sign comes out because of the j, because you squared the j. Okay. Versus when you get cosine and sine, you only have j underneath, but then you also only get a difference of two of these, so you get, you get sine of 2 theta. This is pretty cool. So you're like, I can do that. In fact, you could even extend this out to cosine, you know, cosine cubed and sine cubed, and, and it's just a matter of working through the math expand out the exponentials, group the exponentials, and what you find is you get a very interesting formulation. Similar thing for sine, expand out the values, group them, and then you find out, <clears throat> again, you get a very um, sort of predictable sort of formulation for sine and cosine. And so it's really cool what you can do with these various complex exponentials. And what you'll find is that you dig deeper into a whole range of, of techniques, and, uh, that use sinusoids in, say, engineering applications, you're going to see this used tremendously everywhere. So having command of this kind of material really puts you at an advantage.